Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So this morning we have a MS660 clone uh, cylinder prep. This one is by Neo. Uh, so you notice I'm polishing the exhaust there. I've already done the uh, the heavy work as far as uh, raising the, the roof of it to... Uh, this one turned out to be 99, I believe. And uh, mainly this video is about cylinder prep. Okay, so even when you get a new cylinder, if you're going to install it into your machine, you want to go in and get all the rough edges. Uh, notice the emery wheel that's on it. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, I believe that one's like a 700 grit. So it's really low abrasive. Uh, you could actually run that wheel in the cylinder plating itself. So like if you were cleaning up some left behind uh, aluminum from aluminum transfer from a cylinder or from a piston rather shaling on you, uh, you could use that to do so. Uh, so, uh, cleaning up my intake a little bit, uh, I was whittling in it, giving it some, uh, oh, giving it some rough where you could, uh, it'll help fuel dispersion. So as the air and fuel comes through there, it kind of disperses a little bit. I make grooves in there, but I also clean them up at the end a little bit. That way I don't get no uh, casting in there. And so I'm about to put on a wheel and do some work on my lower transfers. Basically just opening up the lower transfer and uh, making it where more air goes in. And the upper transfers are quite small. Uh, uh, so it allows... I didn't like that tooling. <laughs> uh, so when you, when you make the lower transfers larger... Uh, more air goes in and it kind of squirts out the top because it's, uh, so to speak, from pressure. And uh, it works quite well. Uh, this is true in any of most of your steel saws. If you lower your bottom transfers, I don't. some people go all the way to the bottom of the cylinder and open it up all the way to the base. I don't. I leave about a sixteenth of an inch, just enough uh, of plating. And it's lowering it about a half inch, three, oh, quarter inch or better. And then I uh, hog a little bit of material out while I'm in there. And these don't need to be extremely smooth. Uh, they don't need to be real rough either. But uh, there's no need to go in and polish any of these lower transfers. It also helps on fuel disruption. Meaning, kind of like your intake boot has the little uh, little knobbies on them. That helps disperse the fuel, uh, break up the fuel and air mixture. Uh, takes the wet fuel, helps it turn into vapor. So, uh, so that's what I'm doing is taking out material. Um, make sure when you do this that again you and I will. I'll put my emery wheel back on and clean everything up. Be careful while you're in there with that wheel. Okay, that wheel is very abrasive. And this wheel, uh, this is a sanding, actual sanding disc wheel. If you hit your plating, you will take part of it off. You will mess up your cylinder. So much like any tooling, a deburring tool will do the same thing. If you're in there with a deburring tool and you nick the side of your cylinder, you can still use it and clean it up. Just not good. I would suggest... If you've never uh, ported a cylinder before or grinded on a cylinder, take an old cylinder and just grind on it. Uh, hog that sucker out, make it do some funny looking things, but uh, practice grinding on a cylinder first um, before you won't grind on a cylinder that is going to be installed in your machine. Like I said, this is the MS660 parts kit from Neotech. Um, uh, it's pretty good uh, cylinder plating. I was quite impressed with the plating. Uh, uh, really, this one could have been installed. Oh, wait, no, I apologize. No, this is not a Neotech cylinder. This is a Montello cylinder. I've always been really impressed with these cylinders. They, they're they very affordable, extremely affordable. I'm talking $40 to $50 at the most. I know, I know. But... I've got these big bore kits that have ran on my some of my clones 
for almost a year and processed hundreds of logs and I do inspections of them. They're doing really well. Uh, say what you want about aftermarkets. Uh, in some cases, I agree. Okay. Um, but for my own saws, because I can tear one apart and put it back together. And uh, I like them. I really do. Um, I enjoy working on them. So if they have an issue in the future, no problems. Um, however, I have had no issues with them. So um, there you have it. But see, I'm sitting there still cleaning it up. Uh, like I said, I, I took I taken out a fair amount of of uh, material. Now, mind you, I've already been in these transfers uh, prior uh, that's not been filmed and taken out some already. So, I mean, there is a fair amount of material that I took out of those transfers. You can pause the video at any time and kind of focus up on it. Uh, like I said, this video is a lot to do with just basic uh, cylinder prep before installing it and probably the most important thing you can get from this is taking something even if it's just a uh, oh, 200 grit or something like that piece of sandpaper and go around your ports and uh, your intake port and your uh, exhaust ports in the cylinder and making sure everything is good and smooth before you install your piston and rings and I mean essentially what happens is if you do that and you haven't prepped your cylinder this, the piston does all the prep work for you in the first five seconds that, that the machine starts. And uh, if you can avoid any uh, any of that, that's good. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of OEM saws, lots of aftermarket saws. If you are not able to prep your cylinder, no worries. Just pre-oil it before you install it. And like I said, that piston will do all the honing the honing for you, so to speak. But it's good to go in and prep your cylinder. It's a good looking cylinder. It really is. Um, like I said, you can get these from Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description. Um, they're very affordable. Sometimes I've even seen them as cheap as 35 bucks. It comes with the cylinder and piston and wrist pin, uh, bearing, and circlifts, of course. And now I'm doing, it looks like I'm doing the other side. Um, I'm going to tell you, though, though, that plating is hard. Uh, I go through two or three of the actual Dremel brand uh, sanding discs. Hey, look at my, what do you guys think about my uh, electrical take bandage? bandage? This was actually an older uh, video. That was several weeks ago. I've healed up. Y'all don't worry, I'm fine. Don't worry. Speaking of fine, um, I've heard, uh, you guys go check out Iron Horse's uh, latest video. He's out of the hospital doing great. That is excellent to hear. Um, he had some heart issues, minor, some minor heart issues. Of course, it's never minor when it's your heart, right? Um, but go check out Iron Horse's latest video and uh, give him some love, guys. Okay, so we're wrapping this up here. Um, uh I'm telling you, this is a this is a good thing. See that what that flash was real quick because this is a sped up video. See those those cloths, those are emery cloth wheels. This is probably the best part you can take from the whole video. I go around and I smooth out everything really well. And like I said, I believe that kit comes with four to a eight hundred grit emery wheels. And you can also get those off of Amazon. Um, I'll try to remember to throw the link to those in there too. I think the whole package was like 10 bucks. Hey man, you can't beat that. Uh, it's fairly, I mean like, as long as you don't just sit there all day with it on the plating, you would never hurt it. Matter of fact, you could sit there for a pretty long time. I mean, I've cleaned, I've used these to clean up uh, aluminum transfer, like I said, off of pistons uh, on uh, OEM cylinders. And my 460, uh, whole, whole steel pharma <laughs> y'all go check out that video it's a steel pharma basically it's a host pharma 460 with a uh, a uh, oem top end anyway i used it these to clean that up and they that cylinder looked brand new when i was done so and i'm just polishing my y'all see my trick right there just polishing my stuff up y'all be safe